Hello, welcome to the Lefty Knits channel. My name is Molly and today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of all my hand knit tees. Hey there, thanks for joining me today. Welcome to the Lefty Knits channel. As I said up top, my name is Molly. And if you're new here, this is just a place where I share all the knitting things that I've been up to recently. Occasionally I'll throw in a little bit of spinning, a little bit of bad crochet, but knitting is really where my interest mostly lies. Today I want to do a little show and tell, wardrobe tour, whatever you want to call it, of all the knit tees that I have made since I started knitting. I started making garments for myself in around 2019. I have known how to knit for over 20 years at this point, but it wasn't until I was looking towards hobbies in grad school and starting to have friends who were having kids, people that I felt like I could knit things for, that I really got bitten by the knitting bug in a sustained and serious way. I have scarves, hats, mittens, various things that predated my garment making phase, but I only have tees and garments for myself dating back, you know, five-ish years. I'm defining knit tees as any garment that I've knit, any sweater or shirt that has short sleeves. I have some sleeveless ones. I of course have long sleeve sweaters. I have slipovers, but those are outside the purview of what I'll be talking about today. I have seven tees that I've knit. I have them all stacked up here and I'll be going in more or less chronological order. There's some times where I'm not totally certain which ones came first, which ones came later, but I know which ones are first and I know which ones are last. And my last finished object, the one that I've made most recently, is this tee, the Quill Tee by Tiff Nealon. If you've been around my channel for a little bit, you've probably seen it. But I'm going to save this for last because it is my most recently finished tee, so stick around if you want to hear the deets on this one. So let's go ahead and get started with Tea number one. This is the first garment I actually ever finished for myself, and this is the Lemon Tea by We Are Knitters. I made it in the yarn that came in the kit, because We Are Knitters generally specializes in kits, especially if you want one of their patterns. By and large, you can't purchase them separately. So this is made with the We Are Knitters Pima Cotton in Mitt. I got this in 2019 when I was getting back into knitting. I think I saw an ad for them on like Facebook or something and I'd already been dabbling a little bit in knitting for my friend who was pregnant. I wanted to make things for her baby and I mean I also wanted to make stuff for myself. The idea appealed to me, but I'd always been intimidated by the notion of having to figure out how to make it fit. Things like We Are Knitters, Wool and the Gang, any company that makes these kits kind of purports to take some of that guesswork at least out for you. You, you know, pick your size when you're ordering the pattern. They give you the right amount of yarn in theory to knit your project. You can even order it with needles, although that's something that I think can be a little bit dicey. But in theory, you receive everything that you would need to make the thing that you want to make. One thing that I think is kind of complicated about these kits is that they only send you one needle. If you ask for it, I actually got the kit without needles because I had needles of my own from my previous knitting times. And that was lucky because I actually found when I made a gauge swatch of this yarn that I needed a different size than would have been offered in the kits. If you order a kit and you make a gauge swatch and you're not able to meet gauge, you probably won't actually be able to get a size of needle from We Are Knitters that will work for you. If you're thinking about making these kits, We Are Knitters only has needles in a couple sizes. Uh, I forget what they are, but they're like three sizes. And I think that they would more or less correspond to like a fingering weight yarn, a 
worsted Aran weight yarn and like a bulky or super bulky yarn. So it's not like you can go up or down like a single needle size. That's one thing that I think can be a little bit difficult about these kits. This was listed as an intermediate pattern and I was a little bit worried about pattern difficulty when I was checking them out. It seemed easy enough and it's actually very simple. This is basically just two rectangles that you knit separately. The front has this Estonian button stitch, I think they call it, with just a little bit of ribbing at the bottom, and the back is just plain stockinette. And you sew up the sides, sew up the shoulders. I'm not very good at seaming, and I was probably worse at seaming here, but I mean, they look generally okay. This was pretty simple. It's, I think I made it longer than the pattern called for. I don't know where the pattern is. It's still really short on me. I did have a little bit of leftover yarn at the end. I made like a scrunchie, but I don't think I really had that much extra. Like I probably could have added like three rows, four rows to the front and back. It would have made a little bit of a difference, but it still would have been pretty cropped for sure. This pattern, it seems from looking at the website has been discontinued. The Pima Cotton is still available. That is a, they call it worsted Aran weight yarn. It's 232 yards per 100 grams. And they gave you two balls to make this pattern. I probably used about one and two thirds three quarters, something in there. The recommended gauge for this is 18 stitches over four inches. For the yarn, I'm actually not certain what the pattern gauge is. I might call this more of like a DK weight yarn, uh, light worsted, heavy DK maybe. I mean, the yarn feels nice. I think the problem with a lot of kits like this is that you're restricted in terms of the yarn available the needle sizes available to you, and it's a little bit expensive for what it is. I'm happy that I did it because I think that it was, it, it showed me like, oh, I actually can knit a garment. This isn't that hard and it fits me and it looks pretty good. And I do wear it a decent amount, especially as like a layering piece. I think kits are often a little bit overpriced and restrictive. Like at this point in my knitting career, I'm probably not going to be buying any more kits. It's not really where I'm at. I actually have another We Are Knitters kit and I, I don't think I'm gonna use, I, I've had it now since I bought, I ordered it with this. So like since 2019, I still have the yarn. I probably am not actually going to be making the recommended project with that yarn, the project that I bought that yarn for, which is okay, but I think kits are good for you if they appeal to you, if there's something that it's a technique that you want to try, if you're new to knitting garments like I was when I made this and you feel really intimidated by the process, it does make it a little bit easier to have somebody say, here's the needles you should probably use, here's the, fa the amount of yarn that you're going to need, here's the pattern, like... We have videos on our website to help you learn the stitches, everything like that. So that is definitely helpful. But if you have a little bit more confidence in your knitting ability, if you are more adventurous, more willing to kind of figure things out, you have more specific yarn preferences that you want to work out yourself, I would say searching Etsy Ravelry. Payhip, I think, is another place you can get patterns. Just looking on Instagram is probably a better way to go. Still, though, I'm like generally happy that I made this. I do definitely still get wear out of it. It feels really soft. It, you know, I, I like the stitch pattern, so I'm happy that I did it. My next tee is the Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knit. I made the second size and I used Linea Pura Colino, which is a discontinued DK weight yarn that is 45% cotton, 25% linen, 15% viscose, and 15% polyester. And it has this heathered look to it, 
although mine is even more heathered because I also held it with a strand of Fibra Natura Flax Lace in a white. So the Lana Grossi yarn was 148 yards over 50 grams. So that's pretty light for a DK weight, almost 300 yards per 100 grams. So I did swatch with it. It felt a little bit open, which is why I ended up adding this lace, which is 540, yeah, 547 yards per gram and 100% linen. I don't know if I said that already. I used between 625 and 650 yards of each of the yarns to make the second size. It's pretty long. It's my longest tee. It hits pretty far past my hip bone. I would say it's heavier than my other tees. Feels a little bit more like dense, I guess, than wool. Either way, this is probably my most worn tee. I find it like a very easy shirt to just throw on. I have enjoyed having it in my wardrobe. One thing I did do is I was going through a, a twisted rib phase. So I did twisted rib on the hem and the sleeves. And I don't think that was part of the pattern. This looks nice pretty much with anything. I feel like it's easy to put a jacket over. It's easy to wear with jeans. It's a little bit more coverage than a lot of my other tees in terms of like length. So I don't have any like bare midriff potential in this. This is from the Anchor line by Petite Knit. There's a bunch of different patterns. There's men's sweaters, women's sweaters, kids' sweaters, baby sweaters, a hat, a onesie, a cardigan. There's all sorts of different patterns and this is the DK weight summer shirt. Not to be confused with the anchor tee or the anchor sweater my size I think is the DK weight like wool sweater long sleeve version. I think that these are it's like a really simple pattern but I feel like the ribbing up at the top helps make it fit really well. It's quite simple. You knit these like ribbed portions. You do a couple rows of stockinette where you make your increases and then you make more ribbed sections after that. Um, and then I believe that there's a couple increases, sort of like a raglan increase along the sleeve. I'm almost surprised that I like the fit of this because it doesn't have any short row shaping at all. The front is the same as the back. I only really know which one the back is because it has some sewn in ends in it. I, I still, I don't find it uncomfortable. I don't find it rides up on my neck or anything. If I were to make this pattern again, which I definitely would, I might try to work in some short rows. I feel pretty comfortable with the concept of short rows, how to make them, how I might add them. But like I said, it fits really well anyway, so I don't really feel that concerned about it. I don't necessarily think short rows are like the most complicated thing ever, but due to the lack of short rows and the pretty simple intuitive pattern, the, the way that you're making these rib sections and then doing your increases kind of um, in phases, this might be a good beginner pattern. I think it's relatively easy. I think that it's just like a really nice comfy pattern. This was the maybe the second garment that I knit ever for myself. So if you've made a couple things besides like a scarf I suppose, anything with any sort of shaping, something like this would probably be pretty easy for you. I really love this one. I'm gonna keep wearing it probably forever and I do have some like cotton yarns that I've been trying to figure out what to do with them and honestly this might be this might be the move. I could probably use another one of these. <laughs> My next tee is the Untangled Crop by Olga Putano Designs and I made this in a combo of Knit Picks Swish DK and King Cole Merino Blend DK. The King Cole colors are the walnut, this like rust color, and the graphite, the dark gray color. And then the Swish colors I used were frosting, uh, bare Swish, 
and this lighter gray, which is Dove Heather. So I've talked about this one before. I believe I've worn it before. I was initially a tester for this. I had a little bit of a tight deadline and I really messed up on this one because when I held the sleeves, it's, it's a top-down circular yoke. And when I went to hold the sleeves, I held the sleeves for the smallest size while I had cast on the body for the second smallest size. So I had these tiny sleeves that were pretty tight and the body was pretty tenty. I finished the entire body before I realized that I'd done it because I finished the body, I went back to do the sleeves and I was like, for some reason these aren't uh, fitting the way that I want and I don't have the right number of stitches. And then I realized what I did. I had to email Olga. She was very understanding, let her know what had happened. I was traveling. I couldn't finish it on time. It took me a while to work up the energy to frog back. I think I only frogged back to the sleeves. I don't think I redid the whole thing, but I'm, I may have. I really don't remember. I feel like I finished the sweater for the second time in like a little bit of a blur like just sort of going through the motions of making it and it's not that it's a bad pattern I really enjoyed it but once you like feel accomplished having finished all of this color work it's pretty annoying to have to frog it this tee is comfy I like it a lot um I think it looks really nice it is a little bit thick like the the when and where to actually wear this shirt is a little bit like I'm still kind of trying to figure that out even though I finished it a while ago it's just thick you know like you have all it's it's already a DK weight tee and then you have all these floats on the inside so it's like double thick it's something that I tend to wear most in like the fall or spring with a jacket over it it's not something that I'm often wearing by itself and I also like, I don't know why, but the short rows in the back, um, when I have the shirt on, I feel like they sit a little bit strange and like raise from the back of my neck a little bit. I don't know what I did to make that happen. Besides that, um, I do think I probably could and should have done the tubular bind off a little bit tighter. I'm always a little bit worried about making it too tight and then I think I end up with like a slightly flary hem. So the one modification I did make was I added this gray color, this light gray color to this section of the sweater. This actually would have been the uh, the natural color, this color up here, based on the pattern charts. But I thought that that was like a pretty stark contrast. I didn't like the way that the dark gray looked going into this like very light yarn. And because I'd originally bought this yarn for another pattern, I had an extra contrast color. So I decided to use it there and it makes it just a little bit less of a, of a stark difference. I definitely recommend this pattern. It's pretty ambitious. It's probably more something to make if you have knit a little bit of color work before, maybe knit a garment or two before, but I think that it's really beautiful. I had a good time knitting it. I would definitely make another one if I felt like I needed another color work tee that had this this vibe in my uh, in my wardrobe. Although I probably don't, if I'm being honest. But yeah, you should check check out Olga Putano's designs. She has a lot of really beautiful color work tees and sweaters and and such. If that's the sort of thing. That you're into. This fourth design that I've made is the Notting Hill by the Noble Thread. So this is a DK weight pattern. I made it with a sport weight yarn held double. I don't know if I would call it a sport. We'll talk about it. I made this one with Cloudborn Alpaca Wool Sport. Yes, Cloudborn Alpaca Wool Sport, which is discontinued. I got it on a good sale. It's 50% wool, 50% alpaca, and 192 yards per 50 grams. So for a sport weight yarn, that's very thin. And so that is something that you might see in a fingering weight yarn, but this was technically called a sport. 
and maybe it was supposed to bloom a little bit more. I'm not 100% certain. I don't recall exactly what my initial plan with this yarn was. Once I saw the yarn, it was really thin and it didn't have a lot of like halo or body to make it something that I would probably want to knit at a looser gauge. It felt very almost like like twiny or like a string, even maybe thinner than a lot of like fingering weight yarns I've worked with. So I really wasn't sure what to do with it. I had mostly bought it because it was on sale and I was curious about it, which is something I try not to do as much anymore is just buy yarn in random quantities for th things that I will decide what they are later. I mean, I think it worked out pretty well. So this is a DK weight pattern, as I said, and it's also a free pattern. I think, you know, because the pattern was free, because it had some color work, and because I could easily add a little bit more of the contrast color into the pattern than was called for, uh, in the form of the, the cuffs, the collar, and the hem, I felt pretty good about it, because I think I had a roughly equal quantity of the two yarns. This pattern is knit with mosaic knitting. With that you basically are knitting with one color each round and when you need a new color in the color work you basically are just knitting around again and slipping the stitches that you're not working in each round. So you're almost kind of going through each round like twice, if that makes sense. It looks like some of my ends uh Maybe I didn't do, I didn't do a very good job sewing in my ends here. Or they came loose after I sewed them in is actually probably what happened. Yikes. This tee was very easy. It does have short rows. It's size inclusive and it's free. If you're new to color work, something like mosaic knitting is a very good option. You only have to use one yarn at a time. It's kind of easy to figure out. It's a little bit confusing at first because you have to slip all these stitches but if you're new to color work and new to garment knitting i think that this would be a perfect option because it fits pretty well the one thing i will say is that the sleeves are a little bit tight on me i think this is a case where i did the uh yeah it looks like i did a tubular bind off and i have a vague memory of doing that and it is just a little bit tight on my bicep. There is some like waist shaping in this pattern, which is also kind of nice. Overall, I think that this is a pretty um, enjoyable knit, something that I liked making and something that I would, again, consider making again um, if I had the right amount of yarn and, you know, no, no other project in mind. This next one is my Velen by Camille Descoteau, and this was a early feature on my channel. I was working on this when I started making videos about a year ago. I used yarn for this from Ginger Twist Studio in Edinburgh, Scotland. I went there in May 2022 when I was on a work trip and got this yarn. This is the Sweet Flax 4-ply, and that is a 50% alpaca, 25% linen, 25% silk fingering weight yarn. It's 437 yards per 100 grams. I bought and used about two skeins. I think I used probably closer to like one and two thirds skeins. I have a little bit left over. And this colorway is called Good Morning Green. So I really love this top. It's probably the most technically advanced shirt I made. There's a bunch of different like portions to the the knitting of this because well it's a v-neck so you start actually with the back and you do this tab cast on where you knit a portion that kind of becomes part of a little bit of a saddle shoulder. And then you sort of are adding these stitches at the sleeve, at the front, you ultimately are connecting in the round and putting sleeve stitches on hold, 
there's this pattern throughout. It definitely was something that took a lot of concentration because it was like, where am I in the v-neck? Where am I in the sleeve increases? Where am I in terms of the actual stitch pattern? So <laughs> there were a lot of different moving pieces at once. So this is definitely something that I would not recommend necessarily to a beginner, but I love the way that it turned out. I made it a little bit shorter in the body but by like I think two inches than the pattern called for and one inch shorter in the sleeves. The sleeves are still relatively long for a tee for me but less long than they are in the pattern. In the pattern they're like almost an elbow length. I just I think the detailing on this is really nice. I like the pico edges on the hem on the sleeves. I think that this tab cast on at the back of the neck is really nice. I'm just very happy with this. This is a little bit lower cut than I might like generally and I probably could have either done a couple decreases, done the pico binding a little bit tighter, or maybe done it in a smaller needle size because I feel like the bottom does like flare a little bit and it looks okay, like it kind of looks like that's the intended style. It it may be. I think I might prefer for them to be a tad bit tighter, but I'm overall like very happy with this. And I would actually gladly knit another one of these. I think I would maybe tweak the v-neck a little bit, maybe make a slightly smaller size, use a slightly tighter gauge, something to kind of like tighten it up a little bit because it feels pretty loose. And although that's a pretty good look, I think I might get a little bit more wear out of something that had like a slightly higher neckline and a slightly less sort of flary fit. But I really like this one and I like loved making this pattern. So if you're ready for like a more complicated tee pattern, I would definitely recommend this one. All right, we're getting down to the last two. And these are both things that I've actually talked about pretty recently. This is my Lotus Petal Top by uh, Iris Makes. So Iris is another neuroscientist and knitter. She's also a pattern designer, of course. And I made this in Knit Picks Gloss Fingering. Uh, this is the colorway Velveteen. I'm actually not certain if that's still available. This is something I made for the summer knit along that Iris ran this summer. I finished it in May. Yeah, I finished it in May before I left to go to Boston and I talked about it on my return from my hiatus video. So I don't have that much more to say about it. I do really enjoy how it looks. This is my only bottom up in the round tee. So the lemon tee is also bottom up, but it's knit in two flat pieces. So like the direction of them doesn't matter that much, I guess. It's knit bottom up. So you start with this lace pattern at the bottom and I think it's a really nice detail. You knit up to the armholes, you start knitting flat, and I believe there's like maybe a little bit of short row shaping in the shoulders. There's some uh, bound off stitches along the neckline, so you get this, uh, this little bit in front and a higher back neckline. And for the sleeves, I believe you just pick up the ribbing. Yeah, it looks like it. You don't actually pick up any, um, you don't knit any additional rounds. You just make some little sleeve caps, I suppose, with some ribbing. And then you pick up and knit the neckline. And I could have done that a little bit more neatly. I think you can probably see in a few spots that I didn't do the best job picking up the neckline, but I've been wearing this a good amount. I really enjoy this one. It's super comfy. The yarn is very soft. It is pilling a little bit. But I guess like with a yarn that's kind of soft like this, you might sort of expect it. The Knit Picks Gloss fingering is a 70% merino, 30% silk yarn. And there's 220 yards per 50 gram skein. I used just under three skeins of this. I have a little bit left over. I have this left over in my little uh, vase of scraps. So 
if you have like a skein and a half of yarn laying around and you want to make something um, nice with it, I would definitely recommend this top. It's very easy to follow. I think a bottom-up construction can be a little bit difficult given that you have to do the the pieces separately in so many spots as you're going through. There's a lot of stitches on hold at any given moment, but on the whole, I think that this tee is worth it. And it just, it's like a very comfy wearable tee with like a nice little detail. Mine is a little bit cropped. I've been wearing it a lot with dresses and um, yeah, I just really like this one. So last is my quilty, which is what I'm wearing. This is a pattern by Tiff Nealon. It is made for fingering weight yarn. It has a uh, two color color work. So there is a, a main color and then you just have this color work yoke up here. I used the Yarn Collective Fleurville 4 ply in Hibiscus. That is a fingering weight 100% superwash merino yarn that's a little under 400 yards per 100 grams and I used about 600 yards of it although the pattern calls for about 900 in the full length which is close to what I made. So your mileage may vary a little in terms of the yarn amount. And for the color work, I used Knit Picks Bear Stroll, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, four ply uh, yarn that's about 460 yards for 100 grams. And I had quite a bit of it just laying around. So I used, I think like 30 grams, 20 grams, something in that range. I made the third size of this, which is a 39 inch T. Uh, for me, that's about two inches of ease. I have like a 37 ish inch bust. I used helical knitting after I did the yoke because I didn't want the colors to pool in the two skeins that I was using. This was a little tight, especially in the sleeves before the blocking, but it blocked out really nicely. There's still a little bit of a crease. I think you can see. Um, from where I where I had it on the blocking mats. I did kind of pull the the hem a little bit um, to make sure that it stretched out the hem of the sleeves and it stretched out beautifully. I think that it ended up blocking out super nicely. Like I said, I made a full length which should have taken close to 900 yards of yarn. I used under 700. I did make it probably like a half inch shorter than the pattern called for. Still, I don't think that that would have used 300 yards of yarn. That's like a whole extra skein of fingering weight yarn almost. Half a skein for sure. So I don't really know why I used so little. Maybe it's just a generous estimate, but definitely don't take only my words on uh, how much yarn to use. It gives yardage and directions for a cropped version as well, which is very close to the same. Um, so, you know, you can kind of make this work for sure with variable amounts of your main color. I haven't had much time to wear this yet because I just finished it. It came off the blocking mats a couple days ago, but I really like how it looks. I like how it fits a lot. There's an optional Pico bind off for the bottom hem, which I forgot to do. I did a tubular bind off on my sleeves and um, I believe the pattern just called for you to bind off in pattern, but I generally like the look of a tubular bind off. So that's what I chose to do. And I was just in the tubular bind off uh, mindset. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna finish the body and I'm gonna do the bind off. It's fine. I think it looks pretty good. I think the Pico bind off would be fun. I really do enjoy a Pico bind off, but um, I'm happy with the bind off that I chose. I think it might make it a little bit more versatile. So that works out just fine. The color work on this one is pretty simple, so I think it could definitely be a good option for somebody who is new to color work. You don't have any long floats or anything to worry about, but I think it does have like a good level of impact for the difficulty. It's also not like super thick, like my Untangled crop, because it's fingering weight yarn and because the color work is only in a small section at the top. You don't have that same level of like 
insulation as you might in something a little bit thicker. Although obviously doing something in a fingering weight yarn will always take you a little bit longer. So that might make it a little less suitable for a beginner just because a fingering weight tee is of course going to take more time than something in a DK or heavier weight yarn. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little tour through my hand knit tea collection. I'd love to know if you are a knit tea person, what your favorite one is. I know they're not necessarily for everyone, especially if you live in a very hot and humid climate. Um, there may not be a type, time of year that they're like super appropriate for you. If your winters are cold and your summers are hot, you might not get much wear out of something like this. If you have any questions about the patterns I made or you want to have a chat about knitting garments or knitting in general, feel free to drop me a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like and make sure that you remember to subscribe to my channel. I release videos every Friday that have content similar to this about what I've been up to knitting wise and what I have in my knitwear collection. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.